Thank you. Uh, what I'm here today to talk about is Operation Meld. Uh, this was an operation that was formally commenced in July 2021 in response to some serious offending by a, a group of um, youths. The actual offending had started before that date and some of it dates back to about October 2020 um, when this group were coming together to commit violent robberies uh, they were conflicting with each other, and there are two groups that uh, I can go into more detail about. And they're also committing offences of fraud, and uh, also, as we come to know, and the operation um, took its course, that they're also involved in robberies where people were selling goods through social media platforms, and on being met by members of this group, um, they were being robbed of what they had for sale. It has now become known to us that the group predominantly involves children of African descent. And this is not about their ethnicity. This operation was formed to deal with the serious criminality that was involved with the group. The fact that they were of African descent was not a tipping point in terms of forming this operation. This is serious offending, and it's serious offending being committed by children. And I talk about children, but we do say that the core group is about 20. That group can grow at times, and we have seen various conflicts where there have been more than 20 people involved in it. Of that 20, uh, we would say that three are adults, which makes the predominant membership of the group um, children. The predominant age range is about 16 to 18 years, and uh, currently we have four persons involved in this offending in custody as part of uh, the criminality that they've been involved in. I'm certainly happy to take questions about the story. Uh, the story has come about um, because of some media reporting, uh, but I'm happy to take any questions. Can you expand on the four people that are in custody and, and what those crimes committed, allegedly committed crimes? Uh, they are involved in uh, fray offences and robbery offences. And do you know what dates or whereabouts in the state? I don't have that detail right now. Um, what I can say is that in totality, we've looked at over 120 different charges associated with this group um, since the identification of their offending. When you mention um, that the core group is about 20 people, you've also mentioned that there are two groups. Is that 20 people in each group or 20 people in No, that's 20 in, 20 in total. And, and I say a core group because there's a lot of fluidity to that number. Um, we have seen occasions when quite significant numbers have come together. Um, but again, they, they are what we would say as associates. But in terms of the people that we are addressing a lot of our attention towards, we'd put it around that 20. Would you say that the behaviour has been escalating since the um, Operation Meld commenced? Or is it sort of stable at the moment? We have seen recently some serious stabbings. Um, and again, extremely concerning. Um, those people have been stabbed with knives, so that would make knife a predominant we a weapon for a lot of their offending. In other instances, particularly some of those larger frays, we've also seen knives and baseball bats. Um, so they come together with weapons, um, and they come together in a violent way. So the recent offending would say we have had some stabbing incidents that have occurred, which has all been picked up within this operation. And again, a very strong focus on the investigation of those very serious offences. Can you confirm? Can you confirm that you are looking at um, these anti-bikey laws to potentially label them criminal organisations? Yeah, we certainly looked at it. Um, when you look at the structure of these groups, and that certainly the term gang has been used, to put that into context, what we're dealing with here is children who have come together to commit some quite serious offending. If we look at the legislation that exists around outlaw motorcycle gangs, it's predicated on a criminal organisation. Now that criminal organisation needs a structure, it has membership, it has formalities around initiations. These particular gangs don't have that type of structure attached to them. So in assessing the, the merits of the legislation, at this stage we are erring on the side that the legislation doesn't fit uh, the criteria that these uh, gangs are operating under. How's the community, is it the South Sudanese community that's helping you? 
Yes, it is. Yeah. And, I, and I have to say the relationship with them is very, very positive. This is a community that's concerned about the behaviour as well. It's a community that is not a violent community. Um, this is a very small minority of what is a very respectful and non-violent community in South Australia. So we are working very closely with them. Uh, they have offered all the assistance possible to help us firstly prevent and then when it comes to an offence, investigating that offence appropriately. So I give great credit to the South Sudanese community um, for the cooperation and the assistance they've provided the police. Uh, Police recently um, committed additional resources towards the operation in response to those, um, those stabbings and that sort of escalation of violence. That uh, is currently under consideration. Yes, we are. Uh, we are needing to sufficiently resource the investigations that have flowed out of some of these more serious incidents, and, and in, in particular, they are the stabbings. Mm -hmm. So the investigative focus mm -hmm. is uh, one element that's currently being assessed, and we still have the operational response to again prevent some of this uh, crime occurring and secondly when it does occur being able to respond appropriately. What has come out of your consultation with the community so far? Um, what kind of assistance have they provided? It's really looking at some of those behaviours that just don't fit their community and, and their culture. Um, so assisting us um, I guess with information uh, that would help us put together the investigation that we are faced with when these serious things happen. So I guess I don't want to go into too much detail about their cooperation, but I do say it's been very positive and we certainly welcome their support. Do you fear it will exploit more? Like, could we sadly potentially see a loss of life from this? It's certainly possible. Um, this is serious offending. I mean, any time groups come together and the predominant weapon is a knife, um, the potential for serious injury or death is absolutely there. Um, worried about you. How worried about that are you? That's very concerning. It's very concerning and, and we've been running this operation formally since July. Um, incidents have occurred since we started this operation. The prevention aspect of what this is about, we've been able to apprehend people and hold them to account for their offending. Um, but the potential still exists if these groups continue to come together and um, that someone could get, well, people have already been seriously injured and um, the potential for loss of life is there, yes. What's the motive behind the feuding? Do you know why they're, they're fighting? Not particularly. Um, no. No, that's um, something we've, we've tried to explore, but it's, it's not something that's entirely evident. It's uh, effectively, you could say, two groups of children that have decided they're in conflict. Um, why? Um, still needs to be answered. Drug involved? Know, or? Not uh, from our information, no. No. Is it to do with this? Or anything like that? Uh, certainly possible, um, but again, I guess what we're focusing on is the criminality. The ethnicity part of it is just part of the, the crime, really. Um, the focus is not on who they are, it's what they're doing. Do you confirm the names of, of these groups? Is it a, I think it's the 051 that's been named as, as one of these groups, is that correct? And yes. Can you, can you name the others? Uh, the other one is, is, has a reference of KBS. Um, now why, again, how that's come about, how these groups associate, it's in their sense, I guess, an identity. Um, but again, from our perspective, the actual information that sits around that is, is very difficult to determine what's the origins of it. Um, but that's what they seem to have identified with. Uh, and that's what's been reported, yes. When you mentioned that there um, have been incidents where people have been trying to sell items on Facebook Marketplace um, and being targeted by these groups. That's obviously a threat to the community, but is there a concern that there could be community members who are caught up in the feud, in the violence between these two groups and perhaps become sort of a, an innocent victim of that kind of violence? We haven't seen that so far. And I would say that would probably be unlikely. And um, when the two groups have conflicted, they have been in quite public places, but it's not been precipitated by some other act. And when we've seen the robbery offences committed against people who are not involved, in effect an innocent party, there's been nothing else associated with it. It's just another element of the different types of crime that this, this group is committing. Can you give some examples? I think someone given in the paper, but can you confirm that there's at least six that are linked 
that were named in regards to stabbings last uh, earlier this year and last year? That's correct. Yes. Yeah. So we do have a number of um, serious incidents, and the ones that have been mostly referenced have been the stabbing incidents. Um, what has been reported is accurate. Yes. Can you give any further examples? Uh, we have had large affrays. Um, where the groups have come together, and that's the mention I said of the knives and the baseball bats. Um, some of those occurred last year, and uh, in effect precipitated the formation, the, the formal formation of the operation. And one of those did occur at Modbury. And I have said that the operation doesn't have to do with their descent, but do you think now that they're identified, does that shed a negative light on the South Sydney community? Not at all. No, as I said, this is an absolute minority of the community. This is just a very, very small part of that community that's committing this serious offending. And our focus is on the nature of the offending. Their ethnicity um, is just an element of it. Um, but in identifying the ethnicity, what we have been able to do is work very closely with the community to prevent and properly respond to the incidents that are occurring. And what would your message be to um, the South Australian, the wider South Australian community in the public? I, I do think we put out safety messages all the time. I mean, this, these are, this is not the only group where people have been susceptible to being robbed when they're selling an item. So the, the general safety messages we put out is to do those types of transactions in a public place, let someone else know what you're doing, be alert to the surroundings, um, but this is not about saying you can't deal with a specific group um, that has an ethnicity. Absolutely not. Um, as I said, the, the minority that are offending is still, I guess, disproportionate to some of the crime. Did you say there are 150 charges? Sorry. Uh, it's, it's over 120 charges, yes. And just lastly, how big is the task force? Like, how many people are working uh, we currently have a task force of five, but in saying that, we also have all of SAPOL's resources um, at any particular time um, that can be part of that. Um, this is a very specifically targeted operation. And then the question that was asked previously about considering additional resources, absolutely that's under consideration, yes. Any more questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.